Good evening, everybody. And you're very welcome to this evening's webinar. This is the fifth in the series of Let's Talk Equine. And I'm delighted to be joined this evening by Andrea Etter of Belmont Stud. Andrea, you're very welcome along this evening. Thank you for taking the time out to be with us. Thanks, Wendy, for having us or having me. And uh, good evening, everybody. So, um, I just want to say at the outset, a reminder to everybody that this, um, this webinar is being recorded and it will be made available after um, on our website on the www.chagas.ie website. Um, the participants here this evening are all most welcome and appreciate very much your, your time and being here. So without further ado, um, I'm going to, um, I suppose, introduce Andrea and Belmont House Stud. And uh, I suppose, Andrea, it, 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 it's not a new, it, it's not a new um, presence for the Etters in, in Offaly. They have been there since 1987, so quite a while now at this stage. Um, both your mum and dad, Gerhard and Hedy, owned and operated Belmont House Studding in County Offaly since uh, 1987. And you yourself have been there since 1992 managing affairs. And uh, you, you actually came with the idea in mind to just be there for for six months yes and yeah, it was a bit longer at the end and you're in the end is a bit longer you're still yeah. so i'm actually just going to share my screen so that we can see a little bit of the farm um just bear with me a moment the, the joys of of uh the technology here let's just get, get it uh, working with us so, as usual, participants can submit their questions via the, um, via the uh, Q&A button that's at the bottom of your screens. Apologies. And I'm just going to start playing a little video here while I'm talking. Um, as I said, you know, you're, you're there quite a while. It is very much a family affair. Um, your dad, Gerhard, has been a successful trader and also rider, and your mum, Hedy, very much involved from what I understand in the day-to-day -day running of the enterprise and with your brothers both Mark and Danny both having competed and competing at international level you know you have a, a, a lot of a lot of information to hand within the family as well and skill set um, the stallions that you're standing at the farm you have Stetter uh, you have your homebred Mr Quincy B and Stockholm Pan Ruzaker, and of course, newly arrived, and people are happy to hear that Livello, uh, Cameron Hanley's previous ride, is with you now in Belmont. And other stallions that were bred at the farm include, of course, the Celtic hero, who is most dear to your own heart, I know, and Mr. Lincoln B, the full brother of Quincy B, and he now, of course, with Christian Alman. And from my speaking with you, most of the mares of what you're breeding from are of, internet, of competition background themselves or indeed daughters of, of, of such um, mothers. And we're looking at this lovely footage of the farm. Can you talk to us a little bit about the size of the farm and, you know, the, the, the herd that it carries, we'll say, Andrea? Okay. Um, we have only about 50 acres ourselves around the house. I would rent another maybe 150 acres for, for the horses. Um, we graze only. We don't make our own food, feed for the horses. We buy everything. Um, we have probably between 20, 25, 30 falls a year at the moment. I've had up to 50 falls a year, but got a bit more sense lately probably and have a few less. Mm -hmm. um, we usually keep our youngsters until they are five. Mm -hmm. um, then they are either sold directly from here um, we, we have rooms for guests so they can come on holidays and try horses mm -hmm. or they go to my parents place and my brother's place mm -hmm. um, and they'll be sold from Switzerland. We mm -hmm. all work together. They, they sent me the mares that are finished competing and I send them the youngsters That's to true. be sold from there. Mm -hmm. Like it's a unique system in that sense, I suppose, in terms of, you know, the kind of farms that are here um, and, you know, 
I suppose from from the perspective of how important or how influential the the Swiss system is in terms of the success of Belmont itself. Like how important do you rate the the we're seeing some footage here from Switzerland. Yeah, that's actually my home place. And it's during a show, there's a show on at the moment. Normally I should be over there at the moment with the show on, but with COVID I couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, my brother is into organizing events at home as well and mm -hmm. yeah. But it, it, it plays a significant role for you in, in terms of the production, you know, the, 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 the forward sales will say of the horses that you don't sell here. Definitely, yeah. The system that we have is a system that works for us. Um, it's not a system that would work for everybody else. Mm -hmm. It has developed in a way and it works for us. We all work together. Mm -hmm. But even having said that, you know, with the system that it is, you know, and the uniqueness of it, I think there are still lots of learnings to take from what you do that can be applied to the smaller enterprises here as well. Yeah, I think you can learn from everybody all the time. I think that's the beauty of the horse business. We are never finished learning. Mm -hmm. We learn a new lesson every day, sometimes a good one, sometimes a bad one. Yeah, that is very true. So moving on a little bit, um, you know, and I'll just leave that, that screen there for the moment. You know, from all of your years of experience uh, of working with not just mares, with young stock and, and indeed, you know, you're very much associated with, with stallions and, and, and producing young colts and, and all of that. What, what for you are the most important traits, we'll say, in, in, in breeding stock, be that a mare, be that a stallion and the differences there? What, what for you are the most important traits? Um, willingness to do a job. I think that's my most important uh, trait that I'm looking for. There is no point in having a mare or a stallion that has all the ability in the world and they don't want to use their ability. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like with people. They have to want to do a job. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to do the job, they're no good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, speaking with you, I mean, it certainly seems apparent to me that you know, regular observation of your stock and critical assessment of your stock is something that rates very highly or important to you in terms of the operation. And I'm just showing here, um, I suppose, what we, what we probably, I suppose, refer to as a record keeping sheet that you use. You might just talk us through a little bit in terms of how you use it and, you know, the sheet itself. Okay, so we would... In brief, really, I suppose. It's okay. Uh, yeah. um, especially during the winter when the, the horses are around the house, we keep them in loose sheds during the winter so they're at home, they are not in a field further away. We would maybe assess them a little bit more often. Um, we do that either in the indoor arena or we have a launch pen where it's a smaller area. Um, mm -hmm. I would write down what size they are, either I measure them or sometimes I just score them the way it is on the sheet. Mm -hmm. Then the, the next three steps, the type, the health and the blood, they are not actual scores. So what they are is one is bad, two is average, three is good. Mm -hmm. um, it, they just give me an idea of mm -hmm. what the horse is. Is the horse healthy? Has he a lot of blood or not so much blood? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the, the intelligence or the willingness to do that we were just talking about, that's one of my important scores. Mm -hmm. And then the trot and the canter, again, it's one is not so good, two is good and three is very good. Mm -hmm. um, then I'm evaluating the, the jump, the carefulness, the scope, the technique. And then the overall, the overall is really, it's not an accumulation of the other scores, it's the score that if I look back through the record, it's the score that I'm most interested in really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in a way, I suppose you can, you're, you're following the animals through, like you're not doing this just on one occasion, you do it on multiple occasions over the, over the lifetime and maybe even in a particular year, you might do it maybe more than once, would you? Yes, we would. And it's, it's not only to loose jump them to know how good they are or what they are. It also gives me an, uh, an impression of their health. If I, if I have them in a big group, I don't see each horse individually and 
-hmm. It can be difficult to maybe study them or analyze them if I have them individually in the indoor. I can get a much better feel for the horse. Yeah. And this course sheet then helps me to maybe make a decision quicker on which mares to keep, which mares not to keep, or what stallions to use. But even though you're using this for the larger herd, I think this is something that could be adapted and used, you know, used for those that have a smaller, smaller group of animals as well, too, as a, 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 a tool in their assessment as well. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be big, you know, we like it can be 50, 80 centimeters. It doesn't have to be anything big. It's just to see how how the horse does it and mm -hmm. how he reacts. Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually going to look at and talk about a selection of your favorite fillies and coats that have been bred in the 20, that have been produced and on the ground now in 2020. So the first of those that we're going to look at is actually out of a mare called Gingerina. And this will be a filly that we're going to look at. And um, you might just, you know, for starters, I suppose, you know, I suppose we would say that like the mare actually is 20 years of age. You've been breeding from her for the best part of a decade. Um, you know, what do you consider for starters, what do you consider as her most valued traits from the knowledge that you have from from her, from her own jumping career and from, you know, the information that you have around that? Um, she breeds jumpers. I think that's one of one of her good traits. Um, with her, sometimes the height can be a little bit difficult to judge. She can breed a small one. She can breed a big one. She's not very reliable in that sense. So I could use the same stallion twice and she could breed a small one or a big one, which makes it a little bit more difficult sometimes to pick a stallion mm -hmm. for her. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like, obviously, you know, you know very well now at this stage how she has bred over that period and the, 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 the pedigree, the dam line itself, you know, what's, what's the standout for you in this it's it's a nice dam line, but it's nothing nothing compared to say the likes of Ganesh. Uh, she has one brother that turned one sixties, and there is a few results further down. It's it's more the experience I have with the mare that makes me know that she's a jumper than her page. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of progeny earmarked. Just to talk a little bit about. Um, you might want to start maybe with Hamilton B. Okay, Hamilton B, uh, I sold to my brother in Switzerland. He's a nice horse by Radolin. Mm -hmm. I think he's jumping 130s, 140s now. Mm -hmm. He's a nice horse. So you you obviously, like, you knew Radolin very well yourself, having stood him, and at that stage, you know, do you feel, she, do you feel this horse took more the traits of, of the mare or, or the stallion? Um, probably more the mare. Mm -hmm. And the the next one then here is a 2015 offspring of Exxon Hedonist. Yeah, Exxon Hedonist is a stallion I seen in Belgium and I went looking at horses and he was only a four-year-old at the time and I seen him. I absolutely loved him and I wanted to use him. Mm -hmm. Out jumping uh, with Jerome Gary. Mm -hmm. um, this filly here, she's green. I covered her as a three-year-old and I have a yearling called by Ganesh mm -hmm. out of her that I'm going to keep as a stallion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he has stallion potential. Mm -hmm. She herself has a lot of potential, but she's mm -hmm. only jumping, I think she's jumping 90 sort of meter at this stage, just mm -hmm. nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the, the foal that we have um, pictured here, the 2017 Celtic Hero, I have a video of this here. You might just while the video is there, just, sorry, now I kill the, the music. Pardon me. You might just talk to us about this guy, um, Andrea, please. Okay, um, this is a three-year-old. He was a cold, I kept him as a cold first. Um, and then about a month before this video, I decided to castrate him. He didn't grow as much as I was hoping, and he's a little bit compact. He's by a Celtic, who's not the biggest horse himself. Um, since he's castrated, he, he really started growing, and 
he's a nice horse, but he'll be a jumper mm-hmm. either way, whether he's a gelding or a stallion. I, mm-hmm. I, I really like him. He's a real sport horse. Very mm-hmm. careful. He has mm-hmm. a lot of Celtic traits, I think. Mm-hmm. But as well, too, I suppose, you know, up to a point you thought he was going one route and then you made a, made a decision then as well. Yeah, there is always like I usually they you know you you can't have a, a stallion or you're not breeding from a herd of twenty foals you're not going to breed a proper stallion every year never mind two or three or four you know yeah. and I always like to keep more than just one mm-hmm. um, I think they have to grow up in a herd and they have to play and fight mm-hmm. so. I usually have maybe one that I really like and then I have one or two or three that I like but that I'm not as convinced and I give them the benefit of the doubt and also it helps the others to grow up the way I like them to grow up in a group. Yeah, yeah. So the twenty are easy castrated, but you can't uh, if they're you can't stick them back on. You can't just stick them back on. <laughs> um, this this, this uh, filly here is um, your twenty twenty uh, by Mr. Quincy B. Um, Manny will be familiar with, with Mr. Quincy competing currently under Damien Griffin um, in five year old classes. You might just talk to us a little bit about. Um, Mr. Quincy, just in, 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 in relative briefness, I suppose, Andrea. You're afraid I'm going to talk too long about him because you know I love him. I do, I do, <laughs> and I'm watching the clock as well. Yes, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> uh, Quincy does mean a lot to me. Um, he's, we've had his grandmother, my brother competed the grandmother at 160 level. We had his great grandfather, Van Dango, my my dad's all time favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, he's from a very good dam line. He's a jumper himself. Yeah. And of course, Lucy in the Sky, you know. In- Lucy in the Sky, I, I kept two daughters of Van, Dong- Van Donga for breeding Lucy in the Sky by Opilot, the stallion we had here. Mm-hmm. And also Irresistible, uh, a mare by Radolin, and they both breed very nice. Yes, we've we've seen offspring of irresistible be out and about, haven't we? Yeah, one won the three year olds in Mullingar last year. Mm-hmm. The the same show as um Quincy won the four year olds. One won the three year olds on Thursday and the other won the three year the four year olds on Friday. Yeah. So you have a little bit of a photo collage here of um of him and uh, we'll just um Talk us, uh, talk us through also in terms of, of, of these here, the, the half-siblings. Okay, so the 2016 called the Celtic, I really liked him a lot and he broke his neck. He's mm-hmm. dead, he's not there anymore. Um, then the 2020 fairly is our first embryo transfer fall. Mm-hmm. It's by Ganesh. Um, it's a filly that I'm probably going to keep for breeding with the, with the lines she has. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, it's part and parcel of the tales of the ups and downs of, of breeding as well too, and livestock. These That's days. exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, um, we'll show probably part of this um, video here, and you can just talk to us a little bit in terms of the, um, the, 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 the traits that you most like in terms of Mr. Lincoln. Okay, that's at the show. Oh, Mr. Quincy, my, my apologies. Yeah, uh, that's at the show in Cavan about probably six weeks ago. It was the first show for this year, so he was quite green. On the Saturday, very green, and then on the Sunday, um, he, he it was a lot easier for him. He's, he's a very careful horse. He's an intelligent horse. Has a nice technique, very good behind, which is more and more important now with uh, with the back boots that you can't use anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a brain, mm-hmm. scope, canter, yeah. yeah. So this then is the result of the cross between, um, between Gingerina and uh, Mr. Quincy. So you might just talk to us about whilst the video was running, um, Andrea, about this mare and this foal. Yeah, it, it has. It's a foal that um, 
I suppose it's the first time that I use Quinty on that mare. His falls are the first crop. I haven't used him before because we had Mr. Lincoln at stud. Um, and this fall compared to others is very much regular in size. So it's, it's a nice size. It's not small or big, the mm -hmm. way she can breed sometimes. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of presence. It has a very good trot, a good canter. It's very pretty. It's it's a fall you look at. It's it's one you stop to look at. I think, mm -hmm. and I think probably maybe we're not seeing the absolute of its paces here. Maybe it's a little bit you know tense in itself, so we mightn't see the full of the canter here. Yeah, I was trying to do a good job by trying to have them out in a field, but it was a windy day. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, it shows off the trot very well there, but. The country is too stressed. You wouldn't, you couldn't analyze the canter there in yeah. in those circumstances. The fall yeah. is the tail in the air, and yeah, yeah. the video is probably a bit. Uh, it's a bit slow on my screen anyway. It's it doesn't show it mm -hmm. the way it re you can't really see it. Yeah. So as much as you know, this is a mechanism to to try and yeah, I suppose educate in a way. It's not the perfect mechanism all the time either. Yeah, I, normally I do it in the indoor. It was a nice day and I thought for this presentation, I, I try and make an effort and do it outside. Mm -hmm. it, it probably didn't work as well as, as it did in the indoor. I, I think people can still see it's a very nice filly. Yeah, she has a lot of press and she has something about her. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just conscious of the, the, the clock moving on as well. Um, we'll come back and look at um, this lady here now is Clarissa B. And it's a cold fall that you want to talk to us out of this mare here. Um, you covered her, um, I suppose she was first covered at three years of age, this lady. And she's now 13 years of age. Um, just maybe, you know, I suppose, obviously it's evident you had her over a pole, you know, talk to us a little bit, but in, again, in terms of the traits that, that you, you feel positive about this mare and, you know, take it on from there, Andrea, please. Okay. So Clarissa, her, Clarissa, her grandmother, uh, she's a Holstein mare, not Irish sport horse, as it says on this year. Mm -hmm. uh, she was our first brute mare in Belmont. Um, she was a little bit strong and I I don't know what I was thinking when I covered her with Radolin at the time but I did. Mm -hmm. I think she was difficult to put in fall and we ended up covering her to Radolin even though he, he was a bit strong for her at the time. Mm -hmm. um, the result is a mare called Marisa that we still have in our herd. Um, a mare that breeds nice but she needs she needs blood. We can actually show her here now. Um, this is Marissa B. Yeah, this is Marissa B. I have her now with my friends, uh, Joan and Cherry Lenahan in Seafield. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cherry had her at, um, at the HSI. Show so jumping, jumping. A bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. she, she won the qualifier, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think she was second or third in the final in Cavan. Mm -hmm. It's a fall yeah. by Ganesh. Ganesh really suited the mare. Yeah. And um, here we have some half siblings of Clarissa B. Um, you might just talk to us here. Um, they are both by Opilot and both ended up in Switzerland. Uh, they're both with amateurs. Mm -hmm. um, the Monterey mare, the one on the right. I bought back in the meantime and I have her breeding. She's now in fall to Stockholm. I only got her back this year and she's in fall to Stockholm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are obviously, there are positive traits, jumping traits within this family. Yeah, the, the grandmother would have bred seven or eight international horses. They are a little bit slow to mature, um, but they are competition horses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, this, this guy here, this is a three parts brother to the coat that we're going to look at in a moment. Um, this fellow is in America. And we want to just show a little clip here. The sound will probably go on me again. Yeah. He's a colt that we had. Um, he won the three-year-olds in Mullingar. 
he qualified for the Young Ireland there in Mill Street. He, I think he got, came second in the qualifier, maybe third in the final in, in Mill Street in the Young Islanders. Mm -hmm. And then he was sold to America. He's being educated by Heather Caristo, who also has Celtic. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, she's riding him in the huntering, mm -hmm. but she's not yet sure if he's going to be a hunter or a jumper. He's a horse mm -hmm. that would work in both arenas, mm -hmm. which is a nice option to have. But this American hunter market, I mean, it's not to be sort of sniffed at. It can be quite a lucrative market, market can't it, Andrea? Um, definitely, it's probably more lucrative than the show jumping market. Mm -hmm. Your little, your little <laughs> smile just said that. <laughs> uh, you, it has to be a certain horse, a certain type. It's mm -hmm. not easy. I'm still learning a lot about the hunter game, but it's 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 an interesting market. But it's they have to be very well educated and a certain yeah, type as well. That you can see he's nice, even tempo, jumps the fences in the same way, all of that. Nice technique, and yeah. he's very. They would call him very flashy. Four right legs, right face. He's, he has a lot of chrome, as the Americans would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we 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 have um, the the cold here that is um, by Mr. Quincy B, and um, we've already spoken about him. So we're going to go straight in and look at the the video of the cold, and you can talk us through, Andrea, please. Well, I'm not going to hide. I really love this one. I think he's uh, he's very special. He's he reminds me a lot of Quincy when Quincy was a fall. He's he has the same temperament. He'd come up to you in the field. He's he's cheeky but cheeky in a nice way. He, he asks you to look at him, doesn't he? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. He has a lot of presence. He's a very nice type. He's uphill. He's modern. I think Quincy improved a lot on the mare. The mare herself is by Cedar de Wallet, the French stallion. She's mm -hmm. a little bit, okay, she's she's fat there. She looks plainer than she is, mm -hmm. uh, but she's a little bit downhill. And I think Quincy helped by having the fall more uphill and the canter, he definitely improved on the canter. Yeah, that's for sure. So um, you actually have returned this mare again to Mr. Quincy B this year for her 2021 fall. Yeah, that wasn't a difficult choice. And in terms of, we'll say, you know, I mean, the, que the questions that this guy will still have to answer for you in terms of the, 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 the potential of stallion down the, ro down the road as an option, what kind of questions do you still need to have answered for you? over the next, we'll say, two years? Okay, his temperament, you know, a lot of the qualities, they either have it or they don't. And if you watch them well enough, um, you, you can see as a fall what they are and what they will be. Mm -hmm. um, surely, say, if he got too cheeky, that wouldn't be an option. I wouldn't leave him a stallion. Mm -hmm. Or if his x-rays aren't good, mm -hmm. uh, then that would be a point where you can't have a stallion with, with uh, average or bad x-rays. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be perfect for a stallion, you know? Of course, yeah. Of course. So he's on the start of his journey. This, this lady here now is a half-sister to the mare that we've previously discussed there, Clarissa B. So we've already talked about the mare line here, um, other than the fact this lady now is by Stetter. And of course, you, you, um, you're very familiar with Stetter yourself as well. Yeah, she was actually Stetter's first Irish, Irish born fall. I have her together with uh, Claudia Wiesler, friend from Switzerland that used to compete, Stetter. Um, she's a mare that was supposed to be Ridden. She was supposed to be a show jumper. She broke her ribs and since then she's, she can't be ridden. She's, she doesn't like the girt on. So we, we decided we, we bred her as a young mare, as a three-year-old, I think. She has a nice Celtic. Then we tried to ride her for a year. That didn't work. And I know she's good enough. So we said uh, we'll, we'll breed her to Ganesh. And I think it paid off. It's a really modern filly. It's, it's a really nice filly. 
Do you want to talk to us a little bit um, in terms of Ganesh and his pedigree, his, his, his pedigree and his timeline? His timeline is probably one of the best in the world. And there is loads of 150, 160 jumpers. Mm -hmm. uh, Ganesh was spread by Jerry Maron and Luke Henry. He was born in Ireland. Mm -hmm. He's by a clone of Gem Twist, mm -hmm. Gemini. His timeline has produced, I suppose, horses like uh, Sella. Mm -hmm. uh, there is loads of loads of very important important um, progeny from that line. A brother of Ganesh won the World Championships in Lanark and Kershwin. Mm -hmm. It's it's a very strong timeline. Yeah, and um, I suppose you know you you. Um, you had fortune to be able to use this guy, um, and you, you, you know the, the the traits that he's passed on to the stock. How do you, how do you feel that has translated? Um, I love his canter. I think he has the best canter ever. He's he's like on, on, you know, like on a cloud. He's unbelievable. He's very careful. He's smart. He's he's very sure of himself. He's a real king of a horse, and. A lot of his stock are like him. They are sure of themselves. They have a good temperament, but they are sure of themselves. And real competition horses. I mean, he he won the four-year-olds, the qualifier in Barnard Down, the Dublin qualifier. He he then won two classes in Dublin as a four-year-old. And in the final, he was a little bit tired. He came third, but I he remember won. it. Yeah. 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 He was in Dublin again as a as a five year old. Mm -hmm. He's a special horse. And this lady here, um, she's a, a very nice blood filly. Talk to us a little bit about her and um, the traits that you you feel that she has. I think first of all, Stetter has improved. Uh, Stetter worked well uh, to breed the mother, to breed the mare. She's a very nice type. And then the filly herself has a lovely top line, a very pretty head, um, good canter like the father. She's a very nice type, nice filly. Mm -hmm. and we'll see a little bit more of her movement down in a minute um, inside. So just talk to us a little bit about what's happening here, Andrea. Okay. Um, so just to show what we are doing with our falls, um, there we have them in the launch pen um, to, to get a better idea of what they are, to have them closer. And on this day, I just put down a pole on the ground. It has nothing to do with loose jumping. It's, I suppose it's, it gives the full confidence. It has the mother in front. It's more of a game and I can see if the fall is healthy, if it's in good form, how it reacts to the pole. It just gives me a little bit of an idea and it also gets the, the fall used to maybe jumping a pole at a further stage, which then makes it more stress-free when it has to jump on its own. I think it's clear to people to see that the fall is not stressed here. You know, even if you might say sometimes, you know, when, when you try to take this type of footage outside in the field, they can really be more stressed in that scenario. Oh, yeah, I, I think... The fall is enjoying, it's, enjoy, it's good surface, it's behind its mother, it has no reason to be stressed or... What size is that pen actually, Andrea? It's 17 metres by 17 metres. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a very handy tool for, let's say, analysing a fall or loose jumping or braking, lunging, it's... Absolutely, and I suppose as well too. Like this is still these kind of situations are part of your your record keeping, you know, appraisals as well, aren't they? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So um, just a reminder that people can submit their questions, and I will come to them in a couple of minutes. Um, we're going to look look now at another filly out of this mare, Carolina um, BZ. This mare is 16 years of age, and she's a mare that um, you tell me that you had actually sold from the farm as a three-year-old with the condition that she would come back after her, her um, sport career and um, 
be a broodmare for you. So you might just talk just a little bit here, Andrea, on the, the mare and her pedigree and her what you what you learned from her jumping um, lifetime as well. Okay, I, I might just start with her mother. Her mother is very important to me. Yeah. She's a mare called Cricket. Um, it's a Mercedes mare by Caritano for pleasure mm -hmm. and then Sandro. As many people probably know, she's also the mother of Celtic. Mm -hmm. um, so it's I, I bought cricket. I bought cricket as a three-year-old in Holland of my friend Alclean, and she was in fall to to Celano at that time. The the fall that's now a brute mare, yeah, the grey mare. Mm -hmm. um, I sold that mare as a three-year-old with the condition that I'd like to get her back. Mm -hmm. as a, as a broodmare further on. Mm -hmm. He's jumped in Switzerland with a, with an amateur mm -hmm. and that girl then had two falls by one of the semili stallions, maybe on the arm of the semili, mm -hmm. um, in France and I got her back last year for breeding myself. So um, this this one here is a 2008 um, and a half sister of the mare and a full sister of another mare that we hopefully will get time to look at as well. Uh, yeah, that's a, a mare called Joyride. She's out of cricket by Opila. She's again in Switzerland with a, with a girl. Um, I had one fall out of her at the young stage. I covered her with the sire of Celtic, Calicot Hero. And... Um, She's, it, it shows how, how careful the family is. Uh, they, are, they all have a super technique. They are all very careful. They all have a fantastic temperament. Mm -hmm. That's it, true. It's this a, lady does not want to come near the poles. No, mm -hmm. definitely not. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we need to apportion you time to talk about this guy um, because you, you have a lot of dear feelings about this, this boy, don't you, Andrea? Oh yeah, he's he he means a lot to me. He's very special to me. Mm -hmm. He's he was just he was special from from the day he was born. I guess mm -hmm. I had him in in partnership with uh, with Luke, Luke that I leased the father from Calicut, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, he he won the three-year-old Dublin qualifier. He won the qualifier in Ballina. He won. Mullingar, mm -hmm. he won everything as a three-year-old. He won the four-year-old final on the top right here in, in Cavan. Mm -hmm. He was placed in the five-year-old final. Damien wrote him mm -hmm. and he was in Dublin as a three-year-old. He came second in the final. And, um, I, sp I suppose maybe in a way it's worth emphasizing at this point too like the critical importance of the right rider with the right horse as well and you know the the empathy of riders for horses too yeah Damien does a great job with our stallions he produces them well he does mm -hmm. a good job yeah and um, so we have a bit of a video here again we better kill the sound on this one um this is this is him at four, yes. Yeah, so this is the first time we brought him away. It's a girl that a French girl that used to ride with me here. Um, we brought him to Balina Slow schooling, and that's the first time he jumped away from home. And you can just you can see his his pure talent. His, he's so careful, super technique. Whatever he showed loose, he's showing under the rider. He was always natural. He was as he is, loose, and he is again the same under the saddle. I think it, it proves the point that if they are what they are, if they are good, loose, and good at four, mm -hmm. now uh, 80s with, um, with Heather, he's jumping on 40s. She's taking him slow. She does a super job at producing him. They're a great partnership. And uh, there is a bright future ahead for, for them together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have here a half-sister of the mayor. Um, you might just talk to us briefly um, about this lady here, um, Andrea. Okay, it's a, it's a two-year-old filly uh, out of cricket. So she's a half-sister to Celtic. Um, she's by Mr. Lincoln. And uh, 
I really like her. She's a nice fairy. She speaks loud. Um, she's, I think she's going to be a very nice horse. I decided to cover her. I covered her with uh, our new, new arrival, Livello. I wanted to get a few progeny by him. Yeah. And uh, she's not scanned yet. Uh, she was only covered a few days ago, but I think it should be a nice cross. But I suppose it's worth noting as well too. Although you have covered this lady at two, I mean, it, it's not every it's not every filly that you would cover at that stage, and you're quite, you know, cognizant, I suppose, of the development of of the animal as well. You know, absolutely. I would only do that with a very mature filly, mm -hmm. and always towards the end of the season. So this this was the first cycle we tried in July. We'll try one cycle. No hormones, no manipulation. If she goes in fall, she goes in fall. And if not, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Just we'll, we'll take a quick minute. Just if you want to give us, you know, throw us some scores here using your assessment sheet. Like what, what would you be putting in in terms of intelligence, canter, care from the scope, technique and an overall mark? Kind of quick on this. Okay. As I said, I really like the filly a lot. Um, I will give her, my scores are always a little bit on the high side, I know that, but I'm going to keep them that way, that I know where I, where I am. Okay, no justification required, just bang the scores. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say an overall score of eight, eight to nine. Okay, and we'll say, um, how, does, how does that rate on the average of the scores that you would be apportioning? Um, so I score one out of ten. I have to say, by right, I should have five as the average score, and then whatever is below average, and that happens a lot too. You know, you, they don't always jump very well. Um, should be below five. I have to say, I haven't given a score of of less than five. I know that if I give a five, I don't like the horse, okay. and if I give a six, I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure either. Okay, but, uh, so you, you like this one a lot. And in terms of carefulness and scope and technique, what would you have given on each of those? Yes, she's she's between eight and nine. She's a very careful, she's a nice fairy. I mm -hmm. like her a lot. Okay. So the top left hand is actually still that same filly that we've just viewed. And the other lady here then is the 2019 out of cricket. Yes, uh, it's a fall by Garnish that I like a lot. Um, I think Anish suited the mare very well. Mm -hmm. I didn't get her in full last year, and she's not in full yet, so mm -hmm. I, I hope she'll go in full. We covered her with Quincy. Okay. So we're going to look. Um, I might um, just pull up the pedigree first of Carts Rouge and um, just maybe, maybe introduce this guy to us because he's probably not known maybe to a lot. I suppose uh, a lot of people would have seen him in Dublin. He competed in the French team a few years back in Dublin. He was he was placed maybe third or fourth in the Grand Prix as well. He's um, a horse that I loved from the day I seen him. I think he has a lot of natural ability. He has scope. He's clever. He's smart. He's probably not the most commercial choice. Uh, some people would say. Mm -hmm. But I absolutely loved him, and I think he suited that mare very well. She's by Celano, that can have maybe can be a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. I knew she needed size the mare from the family she is, mm -hmm. and I wanted a little bit of bone, and I want the brain, mm -hmm. and I think I found that with Quartz Rouge. He's a horse that I think a lot of. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Um We'll look at the foal here because the, the clock is pressing. The foal is a lot of blood. Like you, you would never think that quartz rouge will, will breed so much blood. Mm -hmm. She has super movement, fantastic trot. Again, the canter, you can't really analyze. She's too fresh. She, she was in, she had a little, you might see there's a bandage on the leg. She had a cut on her leg. And she was in for a few days because of that cut and then a windy day. So she's she's cantering around like Skippy the kangaroo, but she's uh, she's a very nice filly. Okay. So 
we have a look here then at the last um, quote in the in the list of foes, um, and this is out of Sierra Caribbee, and this lady, this mayor, is a half sister to the previous mayor that we've discussed. Yeah, she's out of cricket again, and by all pilot, she she's a mayor that I like a lot. Uh, she she jumps really well loose. I would have liked, like she would be a nice one to sell, but I I wanted to keep a, a nice mare out of cricket. Cricket is, I think, 20 now, 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. So I kept her as a replacement mare for the family. Mm -hmm. um, she, it's always really important to think about that as well, too. I think that's sometimes something that is forgotten until too late. And it's hard, you know, she's the one you, you would like to cash in and you could cash in, but at the end of the day, you need to keep the best. Mm -hmm. There's no point that selling all the good ones and breeding from, from the others. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen, you know. So um, I made the decision to keep her as a broodmare. I have a yearling called by Ganesh, so a full brother to this one, mm -hmm. um, that we kept as a call that I think a lot of. Um, this fall here reminds me a lot of Celtic when he was a fall. Mm -hmm. He's the uncle of the fall, but he, he re reminds me a lot. Celtic was similar as a fall. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. He, so again, again, with this one, you kind of, I suppose, have in your mind possibly styling potential down the road? I, it's a long road, you know. He, he definitely will be one that, that is on the list, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a long road. Of yes, course, yes. At, at, at this stage in terms of what you're seeing and what's, you know, the knowledge that you have within the family as well, at this stage you're sort of saying to yourself, look, he's in that, he's in that group of potentials, we hope. Exactly, him and the Chesna Court, we looked at the, the Quincy, I think they are my two contenders. We, we can talk again in three years' time and yeah. see if I was wrong or right. We, we might well do. <laughs> yeah. So um, just in terms of the of this bowl, in terms of the quality of his canter in that, how do you how do you rate that? I think the the stallion choice was good. Um, the the fall is a good height and has a super canter. Um, I like the fall a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, here is a summation, I suppose, of the group that we've looked at um, and. Of these, you know, if you were to take a pick out of those that we've looked at, which is your pick of this particular group? That's a not too difficult question to throw. Yeah, I, I love the call, the Quincy <laughs> called out of Clary, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, in terms of the coverings for the mayors for this year, you, you kept with Stallion Choice for the Mr. Quincy Bees. And you, um, obviously, the, the Carolina B, who was with Quartz Rouge, you switched to Mr. Quincy B. Um, yeah, I'm doing a little bit of line breathing on Celano there. I'm conscious of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he, looking at him and looking at the mayor, I think he could really well suit her. So mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you are using your new stallion, or new or stallion, with a Stockholm band, Ruzacker, with um, both Valencia B and Sir Carby. Yeah, uh, he's a young stallion that I leased from Belgium. He's from, again, from a fantastic dam line. Um, I really like the stallion, and I think he, he suits uh, Valencia and Sir Cara. He, I'm quite excited to have a few info to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. So um, I tell you, I'm actually going to just nip out of this for a moment, Andrea, um, and have a look and see what questions are may well be there. And we can always go back in and have a look again in a moment in terms of um, of uh, any any of the other video. Um, I just want to have a quick look at these. Um, okay. We'll just, what, what traits, we've kind of discussed the traits that you've looked for in prospective stallion as a foal. Um, and in breeding, do you think um, jumping is a hereditary trait is a query that's there? Can you repeat that, please? Do you think that jump, the jump is an hereditary trait, in your opinion? Oh, for sure, yes. Yeah. 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 But so is things like 
Writability, I think too many people forget that writability is very much hereditary. Uh, a good mouth, uh, mm -hmm. you see most of my stallions in a normal snaffle bit, mm -hmm. uh, and you see most of their progeny again in a normal snaffle bit, that's hereditary too, not just the jumping. But you always need to start with a good mare. There is no point in having an average mare and cover her with a good stallion. Yeah. I shouldn't say that as stallion owner, but yeah. your reliability, you might have one jumper out of 10. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I tell you, we have a little clip here. Well, not a little, but we, we might skip a little bit through it. But um, I suppose you're kind of keen to to inform people i suppose in terms of i mean my sense that i get from you is very much you know belmont is about being horse centered and having the heart the the the, the horse at, at the, the heart of the conversation always and i suppose i get the impression you know you're very much about not over facing not asking the the wrong questions too soon and you know they have a very natural up, upbringing in how you raise them in in belmont as well and it's very much you know the herd Talk to us a little bit about your production system at Belmont. I think for me, I love horses. You know, I'm, I'm from a family that loved horses. My grandparents are into horses. My parents are. I love horses, so I, I, I like to give them the time they need. Some need more time, some need less time. Um, we are fortunate that I suppose that's maybe why I'm in Ireland, because the horses can be outside, we can keep them natural, they can be in a herd, they can play, they can run. Even our sport horses, they are not locked into stables like mm -hmm. in other places. They might be less presentable because they are in a loose shed, uh, but they are in a group. We start them cross-country, they learn it as false as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, we start them cross-country. Uh, I think a happy horse is giving you a lot more than one that's under pressure. Mm -hmm. And I suppose like we talked as well, you know, in terms of, I suppose, what, what one three-year-old is ready to do, uh, another may not be. And you have to, as much as it's a hard situation, you also have to like think about the individuals within that as well when it comes to asking the, the more serious questions. Oh, definitely. That's... If if you like if you lose jump them at home you you can see if one is ready to do a little bit more or if one is not ready they can be a little bit sick some days and they can't perform or they are growing there's loads of reasons why they don't always perform at their best and I some think are. This is, I'll just in, interrupt for a second. I think this is quite a powerful scene. The number of animals that are together here. Yeah, there was a good few that day. It's the field that we rent in the in the village. It's a hundred acres, and it's very natural. It's uh, there's a lot of hills. They go and drink their water down at the river. It's it's a very natural na na natural scenario. It's it's a nice way to grow up. I think it's a mixed herd. Uh, so we have yearlings, two-year-old, everything actually, even mares with foals. Mm -hmm. I think the young ones learn from the old ones. Mm -hmm. It makes them intelligent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have um, we have a clip here, um, just a, a little. You know, talk to us a little bit in terms of the, the the step up then when it comes from coming out of those that herd situation and and moving on to you know your three-year-old production and the next questions that are asked. Okay, I think, again, one important factor is we don't lock in our three-year-olds. I think it's, it's difficult for a horse if he comes from a herd and then suddenly he's locked into a stable and from being a baby, one minute he suddenly has to be a sport horse and he has to work and it's all serious and it's all... That's hard for a horse. Mm -hmm. I... I I'm a great believer in, again, having them in the herd where we break them, so we will get them in the shed or in the field, depending where they are. Um, they, they learn to get used to the rider, but they go back to their group. It, it makes them easier also. We, we have less accidents that way. They're not wild. They are not fed on hard feet. They are probably a bit slower than other horses because they are not pushed as much feet-wise. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, but they 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 have fun. They they enjoy what they are doing. And just talk to us a little bit about what's going on here. So here, that would have been the first time those horses were out in that field and the first time that they jumped natural fences. It's only probably the second or third time that they ever jumped with a rider. Mm -hmm. And I'd have the, the first mare, the black mare, she's a six-year-old mare. She's the more experienced one. And then I have the green ones just behind they would jump them in the orchard first, that's the wall garden that we also use as the stallion paddock. And then the, then the next, a few days after, we went out to the island, that's, we have a little cross country course there. And again, the more experienced horse in front and the greener ones behind. And assistance from the hound. <laughs> the Rottweiler is helping us, yeah. And am I correct in saying dad is there watching on? No, he's not there. He has oh, sorry. Away. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was him. Yeah. Okay. But um, I suppose it kind of leads me in, in a way. I mean, you know, your, your, your family are still very much a part of the whole, the whole system there as well. And, you know, your, your parents do come back and forth to you. And how much of a, you know, how much of um, an influence we'll say, or, a, a, you know, I suppose we all, we can all have our opinion on our, on our own animals when they're, you know, around us every day. And how important is it to get that other opinion that comes in and out and that maybe sees things that sometimes we don't always see when it's right in front of us? Yeah, I, like my father has an unbelievable knowledge about horses. He's always a little bit more, maybe more realistic about uh, about them. I can be sometimes a little bit, uh, yeah, when you breed them and rear them, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, maybe yeah. you can be a little bit, I'm a bit too soft sometimes, let's say. Yeah. And uh, my dad... I, I don't think that was... Yeah, I, I don't think that's just you, Andrea. You know, I think that's actually, that's the seat or the... the, the the, the the position from which a lot of breeders actually um you know are because they they've they've invested so much and particularly when you have a small number of mares you've invested so much in them and then it can be difficult sometimes to answer the the, the hard questions when it comes to the point of deciding well you know is the progeny good enough is it not do i keep doing yeah uh, i definitely between my brothers and my dad i have uh, plenty of input that brings me back to reality and then I, I'd have uh, Luke, Luke that I learned a lot from uh, in the breeding side of things. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's a genius in what he does. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have Celtic. I wouldn't have Quincy. Mm -hmm. he, I wouldn't have had the, the use of Ganesh. Mm -hmm. I, I learned an unbelievable amount from him. I'm very grateful for his input. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I suppose that in a way as well too, I mean, the importance of, you know, um, good feedback from riders and the engagement with the riders as well too, that, that's important to you as well, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, I, I think too many breeders just breed and they never go to a show, you don't, you don't ever see them at the show, they just read sales results and they use stallions that top the sales. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be nice to see breeders at shows and maybe mm -hmm. breeders work with riders and riders work with breeders. The rider need, needs the breeder and the, yeah, mm -hmm. the other yeah. way around as well, you know. It, it's a symbiotic relationship at the end of the day. Exactly. Yeah. Um, just, I suppose, in terms of, of, you know, obviously a lot of the mares that you have, they're mares that have been competition mares and are, like we say, that have been daughter, are daughters of what have been competition mares. How important is the performance testing of the mares to you, in your opinion? How, you know, obviously, I suppose there, there are breeders who don't necessarily have the financial wherewithal all the time to, you know, do that with, with, with all of their fillies. Um, what, what, how do you, how, how important do you, do you rate that or rank that? Um, I suppose it depends on your experience and knowledge about horses, about loose jumping, about jumping with the rider. Um, the more knowledge you have of that, um, the, the easier it is. Like the likes of Sarah Cara is a mare 
that she was never broken and I'm very confident to read from her. I know how she jumps, I know her family. Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to go and break her and send her to a writer to know that she's a jumper and mm -hmm. that she will breed jumpers. Mm -hmm. I know she does. Mm -hmm. um, again, if the breeder there works with the writer, um, I'm sure, or the writer or somebody more experienced, if they are not experienced, uh, they can analyze their stock, mm -hmm. but it's important to breed from the best, not from the leftovers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I'm afraid um, our wonderful clock is beating us at this point, but um, if I were to kind of ask you, I suppose, what you feel is the most important piece of advice to leave readers with after this conversation, what would you, what would you say to them? I think one important point is be honest to yourself and be honest to others as well. I think that's an important piece of advice. Also, working with horses or trying to make a living with horses is not easy. I think you have to really love what you do. And if you don't love it, I think there's no point in doing it. Um, there needs to be a, I mean, I get great satisfaction and it can be something as simple. Uh, it doesn't always have to be a competition result at the high level, but not too long ago, I got a, a card by a little American girl. She has a pony and she said it was her best pony ever and she loved the pony. I get great satisfaction if I know that my animals can make somebody happy. Um, gives me great satisfaction. It's not only the competition results, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I suppose, you know, that pony side of the house is something we didn't get into maybe now, but maybe we'll come around to it again. It, it can also be very lucrative also. Yes. Yeah. So look, at um, I'm going to say a big thank you to you, Andrea. A thank you also to our, our participants this evening. Um, just to let you know that the next webinar takes place on the 1st of September, the first Tuesday of the month, and Tom March um, of March Stud in the UK will be joining me, and he is, of course, um, husband to um, Piggy Friend. So it, it will be an interesting conversation that will overlap discussion on his jumping, um, his jumping breeding um, and his, his mares that he has for that enterprise, but also um, the eventers as well bedded into that conversation. So it'll be a little bit of both worlds. Um, I want to say a big, big thank you to Andrea and to everybody at Belmont House Stud who helped to um, gather such wonderful imagery and... Um, you calm me down because <laughs> I was a bit nervous. <laughs> all of the visuals for this evening, they were, they were much appreciated and your time has been appreciated and I say goodnight to everybody and thank you very much 